love a chicken shawarma gyro. Oh my gosh, you know when you go to the Greek restaurants or the Mediterranean restaurants and they have like the chicken shawarma and they're slicing it off that rotating thing. Love it. So I'm gonna make a quick marinade for my chicken shawarma. All right, I got some Greek yogurt here, some minced garlic, juice of half a lemon, have some smoked paprika, some cumin, also earthy, smoky, some coriander, just a little bit of that goes a long way, some turmeric for a little color, and some cardamom. I love the way cardamom smells, it's so aromatic. So I'm gonna use just a pinch of salt and a little olive oil. I'm gonna add my chicken to the marinade. I'm using all white meat breast, and I'm also using thighs. And I like to mix it up. Dark meat to me tends to be a little bit more juicier, a little bit more flavor, and white meat in general is just, you know, really great to grill and cook. All right, so I'm gonna let this marinate in the fridge for at least two hours. All right, so I've got my chicken that's been marinating for quite some time now. And I'm just gonna grill it off. All right, I wanna put a little bit more salt and a little pepper on my chicken while it's grilling. Okay, some black pepper. So while that grills, I'm gonna make my tzatziki sauce. Now, that is a very simple yogurt, cucumber, and lemon sauce, and I love to add fresh dill to it. So I have a cucumber here that I am going to grate. And I like using English cucumber because you don't have to peel it because the skin is really soft. I'm gonna let the cucumber sit on this towel and soak up some of that water. Now I'm gonna add my Greek yogurt, full fat. I'm gonna add the juice of half of this lemon. I've used a lot of lemon today, I love lemon. Got some garlic, some minced garlic. A little cayenne pepper, a little heat. About a quarter teaspoon of that. I'm gonna chop up some fresh dill. I like tons of dill. Give it a rough chop. few pinches of some salt, a little sugar to help balance out that acidity in here, and a little olive oil. Okay. I've added my grated cucumber and I'm just giving it a mix. Let me flip the chicken. Ooh, pretty. Look at the color. All right, so I'm gonna build my gyro now. Okay, so I have my chicken here. I'm gonna kinda cut it up so it looks like that shaved chicken shawarma you get in the restaurant. Ooh-wee. Got my pita. I kept it warm in the oven. I wet a paper towel and I locked it in there with foil so it creates like a steam bath. Keeps it nice and moist, you see that? Beautiful. So what I like to do first is put a little tzatziki sauce down, add some of that chicken. I'm gonna add some sliced red onions, some tomato and some pickle. Oh, look at that. That's a euro for you. Close it up and roll it. I'm so excited and hungry. The first thing I wanna do is sweat down some onions and garlic. All right, so I have one yellow onion here that I Chopped up, add some garlic. Mm. And that's another thing too that I like to do is prep my veggies. Like if I see that all my recipes have onion, I'll get like two or three onions and chop them up. Okay. And just have them, you know, ready Already to go. Already ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good tip. So I'm gonna add a little anchovy paste. The salty, fishy undertones play so well with the other briny flavors that go into this puntanesca. Two tablespoons of tomato paste. Now I have one can of crushed tomatoes. Oh, wow a pinch of red pepper flakes. So just a, just a little, little heat, spice. just a little spice. And while that simmer, because I need it to, to thicken up just a okay. little bit with the, the paste and the, the crushed tomatoes. Got some water been, that's been boiling back here. Can you drop a little bit of the spaghetti? You don't have to use the entire package, okay. it's just us. We're gonna boil it for about 10 minutes and take it out, put some cold water on top to stop the cooking process. While that's going, we gotta cut up some chicken. Okay. All right, come Let's over here. Go. 
All right, so we have our second rotisserie chicken here mm -hmm. that I'm gonna break down. Cut out the backbone. Okay. I don't have to shred it for this one. Basically leaving this into like cut up chicken pieces. We're gonna drop the chicken into the sauce. Okay. So it's gonna break down a little bit, loosen up, kind of become one with the sauce. You know, you wanted that sauce to get inside that meat. Yes. So it's been about 10 minutes. We're gonna take the chicken back over there okay. and nestle it into the sauce. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add about a cup of olives in here. Two tablespoons of capers. Also another element of a little brine, a little salt. A little bit of Italian seasoning right there. Okay. The pasta is done. I'm gonna drain it back here. Cold water. And the reason you run cold water over pasta is because you don't want it to continue to cook. See, it's gotten nice and thick. Yes. So this is a thick sauce. Okay. Rich, very rich. I'm gonna add in those chicken pieces. Okay. Just nestle it in there. And you know the chicken is already cooked. All I'm doing right now is just warming the chicken up with the sauce. Okay, okay. And getting that flavor infused into the chicken. It looks like you spent all day with this chicken that you cooked, slow cooking on top of your stove for hours. And you can tell your husband that too, like, look, I've been, oh, I've been home all day making your meal. <laughs> and, <laughs> all right, so we got our pasta. We're good to go. Let's try it. Okay. I wanna get you a few pieces of that chicken breast. Okay. and some olives. Top you off with a little oregano leaves. Okay. Bon appetit. <laughs> Love it. Mm. Mm. It's good, Curtie. This is mm -hmm. so tasty. Oh yeah. I mean, it tastes like it's been cooking for hours with the onions, the garlic, mm -hmm. but then you get a punch of that big juicy olive when you bite into it. Do you think this is something you'll try at home? Definitely going in the I list. So I have a green bell pepper that I'm gonna put on the skewer with the pineapple and red onions that I've already diced. I'm gonna get started on that jerk marinade. A teaspoon of ginger, tablespoon of allspice, half a teaspoon of thyme. Dried thyme is a little bit more pungent than fresh thyme, so you wanna use a little less. One bay leaf, some cinnamon, fresh nutmeg. Jerk spice is really, really aromatic. It's spicy, it's a little citrusy, and when you add things like the soy sauce and the vinegar, it makes it a little, if that makes sense. It's, it's spicy, it's, and it's good. <laughs> Distilled white vinegar, canola oil, juice of an orange, the juice of one lime, and the ingredients themselves just remind me of the Caribbean islands. You know, the orange, the lime. So I put about two tablespoons of soy sauce in here and three tablespoons of light brown sugar. Drop two garlic cloves, some scallion, pinch of salt, and last but not least, the heat, habanero. I'm gonna de-seed this pepper. I mean, if I put the entire thing in there, it's gonna be really, really spicy, and I don't wanna scare my girls away. <laughs> Get it going. I have two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast that I've cut. Pour that marinade right on top. So I'm gonna let this marinate for about an hour. There's no really real instructions on how to make a skewer. It's like whatever you wanna do. They don't have to match, it's just as long as they're cute and they're on, this, on the skewer. Vegetable first, meat next, fruit, onion, and then back to green pepper. So I've created a little pattern here. I have pepper, chicken, pineapple, onion. And I'm gonna keep doing that till I get almost to the end and I'm gonna start another skewer. Get some of that marinade on the veggies. Sprinkle a little bit more salt on top. These are done. It's time to get that grill fired up. I've got my grill nice and hot. Sprayed it down with some cooking spray. Lay them diagonally. 
across my grill grates. So I'm gonna cook the chicken for about 10 minutes. I want the chicken to reach an internal temperature of about 165. Those look great. The yellow, the pineapple, the char on the chicken is gorgeous. Look at that. Tequila tangerine chicken wings. So I have about a cup and a half of tangerine juice. So I'm slicing up two jalapenos. I want to cut about two of these tangerines. All right, so I'm gonna head over here to my stove. I have my tangerine juice here. I have a half a cup of sugar. I'm gonna put some of my jalapenos in here. Add some slices of my tangerine. I'm gonna add some soy sauce in there. I'm gonna give it that salty umami flavor. Give it a stir. I'm not adding in my tequila right now. I want the sauce to kind of cook up, get nice and bubbly, the sugar to melt. If I add it in right now, it'll just burn off and I won't get any of that taste of the tequila. While that's heating up, I'm gonna season my chicken. Simple seasoning, salt and pepper. This is about two pounds of chicken. I decided to use whole wings, but you can always use wingettes. Flip it over. Some salt and pepper on the other side as well. And before I fry these, I'm gonna check on my sauce. I'm gonna add in just a little bit of tequila. Now, if you have kids at home, skip the tequila. It'll still be a great dish. Give it a quick stir. I'm gonna actually push it back and get it off the heat so it can set up and get nice and syrupy. I have my oil heated here to 375 degrees. Let me grab my tongs and fry these in batches until they become nice and crispy. While those fry, I'm gonna finish up my sauce. I have a strainer here. I'm gonna remove all the bigger pieces. Move this out. Okay. I'm gonna add it back to my pan to thicken it up with a slurry. And the slurry is just two tablespoons of cornstarch whisked into one cup of water. And now I'm whisking up my slurry and I'm looking for a sticky, thick type of sauce to coat my chicken wings. Okay, as it heats up, it'll start to thicken up. My wings are done now. They are golden brown. Grab my sauce, pour it into this bowl. Grab my chicken. All right, now I'm gonna coat my wings in the sauce. Oh, sticky wings. I think it's cool enough to try. Mmm, some good chicken wings. We are making Nashville hot chicken sandwiches. When I feel like something spicy, this is my go-to. I'm using my house-made seasoning on this chicken, which is gonna give it an extra burst of flavor. And the great thing about it, you can use it on almost anything. Here's a little housekeeping before we begin. Get a Dutch oven, pour at least four inches of a neutral oil. You can use canola or vegetable oil. Heat it up to 365 degrees. Also line two sheet trays with wire racks. All right, let's get cooking. We've talked about the house seasoning, let's make it. We have one teaspoon of kosher salt. And these are just gonna be equal parts. One teaspoon of sweet paprika. One teaspoon of granulated garlic one teaspoon of onion powder, and one teaspoon of black pepper. Let's give it a whisk. All right, set that aside and let's start our dredging station. We're gonna use one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Put that onto a plate. Into a separate bowl, add a half a cup of hot sauce. And two cups of buttermilk, full fat. Okay. 
Give it a whisk. And I've already cut my chicken breast in half. You should have four bone less skin on chicken breasts. Take some of our house seasoning and let's season our chicken. Both sides. Just rub that seasoning in on the skin and on the back. Let's wash our hands. Well, let's start to dredge. Take one of your chicken breasts, roll it around in the flour. Essentially, we're gonna just double bread, flour, buttermilk, flour, and we're gonna do that until we're done. Shake off any excess flour, roll it around in your buttermilk, drip off any of that buttermilk mixture, bring it back to your flour. This is gonna create a super crunchy crust. Shake it off, put it on your wire rack, repeat. I love a Nashville hot chicken sandwich. It's spicy, it's a tad sweet because I add some brown sugar in there. It is my go-to sandwich and I make a slaw that is to die for that goes on top. You're gonna love it. And when doing this, I like to keep one hand clean. And Nashville hot chicken is a comfort food for me because it just reminds me of growing up in the South with those fried chicken Fridays and the addition of this spicy sweet sauce definitely takes me back, not to home, but close to home. <laughs> This should be your last piece. Okay, let's wash our hands. All right, let's head over to the stove. All right, the oil should be at 365. Let's put our chicken in the oil, skin, down, skin side down first. You should be able to fit all four pieces in at one time. All right, so let's not bother the chicken. Let it do its thing for about 10 minutes. Now we're making our Nashville hot sauce. We're gonna start with one stick of unsalted butter. We're gonna let that butter melt. Add one teaspoon of the house seasoning, a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, now this Nashville hot chicken is spicy. That's where you're gonna get some of that heat from. The seasoning comes from the house seasoning. You're gonna also add in some hot sauce. Give it a little extra depth of hot. That's one cup of hot sauce. So let's add one quarter cup of light brown sugar. Use a spoon, give it a stir. Make sure your heat is on low. All right, I'm gonna let this go for five minutes. Hit pause and meet me back here when your chicken is done. It's been a little over 10 minutes. Our chicken is done. Take it out. Ooh, look at that. Perfectly golden brown. Now that's what I call fried chicken. Look at that big one right there. <laughs> Oh yeah. I don't know about you, but my mouth is watering. All right. Turn your heat off and make sure you turn the heat off on your sauce as well. Okay. Let's make our slaw. We are making a Southern slaw. Let's start off with 
the dressing. A quarter cup of mayo. This slaw is gonna go on top of our Nashville hot chicken. Dump your mayo into a bowl. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Two teaspoons of sugar. A pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. Give it a whisk. My definition of a Southern slaw, it's tangy and it's a little sweet. Okay. Put that to the side. All right, we're gonna use half of this red cabbage. We're gonna make about a cup of shredded carrots. Let's get started on the cabbage. I just like going right down the center, avoiding the stem because it's really hard to cut. Okay. Set this to the side. Okay. Take some of that center out. Let's thinly slice our cabbage. Let's put our red cabbage in the bowl. Let's slice our shallot. A shallot is a milder onion. If you can't find a shallot, which should be easy to find in the produce section, you can also use an onion of your choice, yellow, red, sweet onion, Valdalia onion, whatever you got on hand. Add it to your bowl. Might want to break it up a bit. All right? And let's shred one cup of carrots. All right, that should be about a cup of shredded carrots. Let's add it to our bowl. Using your tongs, give it a mix. Make sure you're gathering some of that dressing from the bottom to the top. All right, I'm gonna clean up a bit, hit pause, meet me back here so we can build our sandwiches. All right, we have everything set up to build our sandwich. All that's left is to build it. Take your chicken, move it around in your hot sauce. Oh man, look at that color on that chicken. Don't you be stingy with that sauce. You gotta soak it in there, okay? All right, I have toasted some potato rolls with a little butter. What I like to do now is add my pickles at the bottom. You can too. I like a lot of pickles, so I'm gonna go heavy. <laughs> Take your chicken. Place it on top of your pickles. Get some of that southern slaw and put it right on top. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's okay if it falls apart. It's supposed to be messy. And what I like to do is get a little bit more of that sauce and drizzle it on top. Close your sandwich. Mm -hmm. Take a bite. It's spicy, it's a little sweet, it's definitely tangy. That potato roll just cools it down a little bit. The pickles add a little zing zang to it as well. It's a pretty decent sandwich. So I have diced one Yukon Gold potato. I'm gonna get my skillet hot, season my potatoes with a little salt and pepper. I'm using Yukon Gold because I love the buttery texture. Some oil to my pan. I'm gonna add some butter as well. Cook it off for just a little bit, not too much. I don't want it to get mushy. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna prepare the rest of the stuffing. So I also have a crown of broccoli here. I'm not gonna use all of this. I wanna chop this broccoli pretty fine. 
So I'm also using country ham in this recipe. I had to do something better than just like a little boring old chicken breast. Like I can give them that anytime. It's gonna add a little bit more saltiness and flavor to this dish. All right, so I'm gonna check on my potatoes and they look great and I don't wanna cook it anymore. So I'm gonna turn that heat off, let it cool out and finish the rest of my filling. I'm going to shred some Gruyere cheese and some sharp cheddar. Now I'm gonna add my potatoes to this bowl. Use a spoon here. All right, let me grab my chicken. Now I decided to use bone in chicken breast with the skin on um, to add a little bit more flavor to this dish. But if you have boneless, skinless chicken breast, you can use that as well. This is a complete meal right here. We can stop where we're headed, you know, make a little omelet out of this too, see? I am going to make a little slit into my chicken breast and make a little cavity to stuff my filling in, making sure I don't hit that bone. I don't want to split the chicken, just create a pocket. I'm going to stuff this into my chicken breast. Look how pretty that is already. And after I stuff the chicken breast, I'm going to close it up with these little skewers here. This is gonna be some flavorful chicken from the inside out. All right, so I'm gonna sear this off in the same skillet. So I think this one is almost there. There you go. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I have my oven preheated to 375. I am going to put this off until the internal temperature reaches about 165. That should take about 30 to 35 minutes. The chicken is done. Nice and brown. The cheese is bubbling. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. crispy rice coated chicken. So it's gonna be extra crispy and juicy. Because this rice needs to really stick to the chicken, I gotta create a dredge. Two cups of all purpose flour, a few teaspoons of my house seasoning, that's paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. It goes well on anything. Three eggs in this bowl. A half a cup of whole milk. Mix that up. Take my crispy rice cereal and put it in this bowl. I like to put just enough in there, but I'm gonna also have to crunch this up. This is definitely an unexpected way to use rice. All right, I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper to my rice cereal. All right, so I have eight drumsticks. What I'm doing here is taking my drumsticks, coating it in the flour that I have seasoned with my house seasoning, putting it in the egg mixture with the milk, and then coating it with the crushed rice cereal. So you can only imagine how crispy this is gonna be. My chicken is coated. Gotta wash my hands like I've been working. <laughs> I have some peanut oil over here heated to about 350. That's the temperature that chicken or anything that you fry fries best at. I'm gonna fry these until they're golden brown. I like them when they're pretty and golden brown and you don't wanna overcrowd your pot or your oil because if you do that, it's not gonna fry evenly and it'll take a long time for the chicken to cook. This is where I like to stop, right here. It's golden brown, it's juicy, I'm not gonna dry it out. I'm just gonna finish this off in the oven. And I have my oven to about 350. I'm gonna add my next batch. Again, I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna let these hang out until they come to temp. My chicken is done. Oh, now look at that. Perfectly cooked rice coated fried chicken. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I want you guys to hear the crunch. Listen to this. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I'm using some chicken thighs, some root veggies I had in the fridge. I got some rainbow carrots, I got parsnips. I'm using beets and onions. I am slicing my vegetables into bite-sized pieces. And I've also peeled all of my veggies as well. The next thing I'm going to slice is a red onion. And a red onion adds um, more onion flavor, so a big punch of onion flavor, which I really like. All right, I'm gonna add some olive oil to my bowl, and I'm gonna season my root vegetables with my house seasoning. That's some salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and a little bit of paprika. Goes well with anything. Give it a toss. So I have four chicken thighs here. I'm gonna hit it with a little olive oil. So I've just added some Dijon mustard to the skin of my chicken thighs. Not only is it gonna help kind of like tenderize the chicken and give it a little tangy flavor, but it's also gonna help the seasoning stick right on top of that. Spread that Dijon mustard on both sides. And now I'm just gonna add my house seasoning. I'm gonna grab my root vegetables, my chicken. I'm gonna add a little oil to my hot skillet. I'm just gonna sear both sides of my chicken skin side down first, and then the chicken is gonna cook through in the oven. So I've had this skillet for a very long time, so it's well seasoned. All right, so now it's time to flip my chicken thighs and let the back side sear. Mm, look at that, that nice, pretty golden brown color. The cast iron just kind of absorbs flavor, especially when you're like frying something. Oh my gosh, all the oils and the seasonings and all of the brown bits that kind of get stuck in it. That's why you never, you never should use soap in your cast iron skillet, especially when cleaning. And if you want to clean your skillet, make sure you do it right after cooking and use hot water with a stiff brush. Then use a towel to dry. Never let your cast iron sit in water, sit in soap, you just ruin it. I'm gonna remove the chicken now and then add in my veggies. All right, now I'm gonna add my root veggies. So I like to saute my veggies in the same skillet right before I put it in the oven because it kind of helps the cooking process. Once you get a nice sear on it, cook it down just a little bit, it'll cook faster in the oven. Now I'm going to add my chicken back to my skillet. Kind of nestle it in there. And now I have some fresh herbs that I like to add in there as well. I'm gonna add some thyme, a little rosemary, tarragon. It smells like heaven in here right now. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to roast this at 400 degrees um, until like the chicken, to the juices in the chicken run clear and the internal temperature reaches about 165. While that roasts in the oven, I am gonna make a garlic butter sauce to pour on top. I'm gonna add about six tablespoons of unsalted butter. I want to squeeze the juice of half of this lemon, so about one tablespoon. Now I'm gonna add some minced garlic, a little salt, a little black pepper, some dry sherry. Now if you're making this for kids and you don't necessarily want them to have any alcohol, that's fine, even though most of it will cook out. But if you wanna make this for your children, you can by all means skip the sherry. I'm gonna roughly chop some fresh parsley. Mm-hmm. All right, so my butter sauce is done, and so is my chicken. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Come on, look at that. That is good cooking right there. And it's just gorgeous. Oh yeah, get all that garlic in there. I'm smelling all of those fresh herbs. And then all that garlic does is just kind of mix in with some of those natural juices and creates a sauce for the chicken. Mm, 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 mm. Man, that chicken is nice and juicy. And it's super flavorful with that house seasoning. Mm. And then that, that garlic lemon butter just creates the sauce that goes so well on the chicken. And don't get me started on these root veggies. Mm, mm. Beets are so sweet. And the parsnip, oh my gosh. And I'm getting like a mouthful of garlic, which I really enjoy, because I love garlic. I am shredding this entire chicken. 
the wings, the thighs, the breast, but I'm not using the skin, especially like in soups and stews. It makes it really fatty and there's like a film that forms. What I usually do is just eat it as I go. <laughs> I'm gonna put one and a half cups in this bowl for my chicken noodle soup. Now I'm gonna chop up my veggies. I have one stalk of celery and I'm gonna cut up this entire onion. That's pretty fine. Roughly chop some parsley. If you use dried, you wanna use a lot less. Dried herbs are much stronger than fresh. Head over to the stove and get this baby started. I'm gonna add a little olive oil to get my onions and celery started. Add a little salt to help draw some of that water out of it. I'm cooking my onions down until it becomes a little translucent, a little soft. So the onions are nice and translucent. A little garlic powder, some onion powder, a little bit of the Italian seasoning. It has basil, parsley, oregano, last but not least, the chicken bouillon. I'm gonna use just about a tablespoon. Because I am not using a chicken stock or a chicken broth, I gotta break this down with some water. I'm using five cups of water. I'm basically creating my own broth. So my water and onions and everything has come to a boil. Now I'm gonna add that shredded chicken. So that's about a cup and a half. I'm gonna also add my parsley now. Frozen peas and carrots, they get used in my house. They come in handy. This is a 16 ounce bag, so leave about that much in there. Add a cup of my egg noodles. Okay, that's about a cup. Bring it back to a boil and just cook it until the noodles get soft and they're al dente. And talk about easy and simple and inexpensive. To this food processor, I'm gonna add one and a half sticks of salted butter, parsley, thyme, and some oregano. I'm gonna also use the juice of two lemons, four cloves of garlic, freshly cracked black pepper, one teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of sherry. Give this a zap, and I'm just mixing it until it becomes very cohesive. This is great. So I have two whole roasters here. What I'm gonna do now is called spatchcocking. It's basically taking out the backbone and laying the chicken down flat. It cuts the cooking time nearly in half and every piece of this chicken will be nice and crispy. Put that backbone to the side. You better keep that backbone, make some good stock. Two hands, press down, the breast is flat. So now I'm sticking my fingers through the skin to create some pockets where I can put this glorious butter. All right. Grab my butter and the juice that's in the bowl. Mm. As soon as it hit the pot, whoo! Got a whiff of that herb, got a whiff of that sherry and that garlic. Mm, 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 mm. All right, that's melted and just brush it directly on top. Wow, look at that. You already see the seasoning in that. It is gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna cover it. I have the oven preheated to 450. I'm gonna bake it covered for 20 minutes and then uncover for 40 minutes. Mm. Oh my goodness, it smells amazing. The chicken is starting to cook. I'm just gonna use some of the juices that are at the bottom of the pan to baste, ooh, my goodness. So it's nice and basted. I'm gonna pop it back in the oven. It's still at 450. I'm gonna let it bake for an additional 40 minutes or until this skin gets really nice and brown and crispy. Now we're cooking. That is beautiful. I have eight wings that I've seasoned with some salt and pepper. I'm gonna give it a mix with my tongs. I'm doing it old school like my mama and grandmama do. Get some flour, dump it in my bag. I'm gonna add in about a teaspoon of my house seasoning. Okay, give it a shake. Add my chicken wings. Shake it up. You know what, I don't know what it is about this bag, but honey, it coats some chicken beautifully. Just dropping my wings in the hot oil. It is imperative that this oil is extremely hot, otherwise you will have a greasy piece of chicken. They take about 10 to 12 minutes to fry depending on how big your wings are. For me, this is gonna take about 10 minutes. 
I'm basically just frying it until it turns a golden brown color. You also know that your chicken is done when the chicken starts to float. I'm shallow frying, so it won't necessarily float, but I can tell by just the color of the chicken. So I'm making a sweet, tangy, more so sweet than tangy, barbecue sauce from scratch. So I'm using this whole can of tomato sauce, some ketchup, a concentrated tomato flavor, got some Worcestershire sauce, some soy sauce for a little salt, some apple cider vinegar for a little tang, a pinch of garlic powder, a few pinches of onion powder, some brown sugar, dark brown sugar. I want a lot of that molasses flavor. And maple syrup. Let me add a little pepper to this as well. And a pinch of salt. Give it a whisk. And as the tomato sauce cooks, it'll darken up once that molasses and brown sugar and maple syrup start to cook. And of course I have to taste it, make sure it's right. Ooh. I don't know if you can hear my foot. Man, that's good. I'm gonna turn the heat down. Let this simmer on low for about 30 minutes. While that's simmering, I'm gonna tend to this chicken right here. The wings are done. Look how golden brown and pretty these are. That's my favorite part of the chicken wing, that extra piece of crispy skin. <laughs> All right, my girls are coming by and I can't wait. I fried up the chicken. Now I gotta do the waffles, sweet potato waffles that is. I got two cups of all-purpose flour in here. I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of baking powder. I have a teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm adding the cinnamon to the sweet potato waffle because I want it to kind of taste like my grandma's sweet potato pie. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. Give it a whisk. Now for my wet ingredients, I have a third cup of unsalted melted butter, two cups of full fat buttermilk. It's a buttermilk waffle, mm-hmm. Fluffy, airy, a little crispy on the outside, soft and pillowy in the center. A tablespoon of that brown sugar. And I got one medium sweet potato here that I have boiled and smashed. And two eggs. Give it a whisk. And the sweet potato pie flavor is a perfect contrast to that savory fried chicken. All right, now I'm gonna add my wet to my dry. All right, just give it a whisk until I can get some of that flour chunks out. This is gonna be kind of a lumpy batter and that's okay. Mm, it smells well, so good. Hey, hey yeah. girl. Come on in. Okay. So I have a cup of my waffle batter here. Fancy. Ooh, it came out well, perfect. Oh, you smell that? Yeah. You smell that? So golden brown. Uh huh. You know how I do. Oh, Got my barbecue sauce over here. Watch your back. Ooh. Yes. Chicken wing. Get a little jalapenos. You guys Ooh. like pickled jalapenos? A little. All right. Got a little syrup. This waffle, though, y'all. It's like my grandma's sweet potato pie in a, in a waffle form. Right. Yeah. Get the barbecue sauce with it. Mm hmm. It's a whole new ball game. I'm gonna make this dry rub. Equal parts smoked paprika, some parsley, and some oregano. Any family member in my family, I always supply them with some house seasoning. Garlic powder, onion powder, sweet paprika, salt and pepper. Add just a little bit more salt. Some brown sugar in there. It's gonna get nice and caramelized on the grill when it smokes. All right, that's done. So I got a five pound bird here, a whole roaster. Take that backbone out, and that's gonna help the chicken cook much faster. And I'm gonna cut it in half. All right, there we go. What you been doing since I've been out there sweating uh, on that grill? You act like you put something on the grill. <laughs> it's like all you did was get it started. What? It's still, it's not. not. So what you doing now? I'm just rubbing the chicken down with the rub that I made with my house seasoning, the light brown sugar, uh -huh. you know, all that jazz. Getting underneath there, getting in the cavity, you know what I'm saying? You know how we do it, flavor all around. All right, Ma, thank you. Let me put this on here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get it on the grill. I like to keep the grill about 250, 300 when you're doing indirect smoking. Coals on the right side, I'm gonna put the chicken on the left. The smoke inside the grill is cooking the chicken versus directly putting it on top of the coals. It's gonna be infused with that smoky flavor. Let it stay on there for about 45 minutes to an hour. Then I'm gonna take those bad boys over. Put on the other side towards the end and get a nice little char in those grill lines on top. I'm excited. 
My mom loves Alabama white sauce. She puts it on every like barbecue ribs. I mean, it's better for like chicken and pork. So that's about a cup of mayo, some apple cider vinegar because it is a vinegar based sauce, about two tablespoons. Some Dijon mustard goes in there, just a squirt. Okay. A little horseradish, a little zest, a little zip, a little dry mustard in there as well. Dry mustard just complements that Dijon that we're already using. A little hot sauce, a little heat, mm -hmm. a few dashes. Salt, pepper. And I kind of like to go heavy on that pepper. Brown sugar just to kind of mellow everything out because I'm using so much vinegar and hot sauce. The juice of half of a lemon. So it's a little tangy, it's a little sweet. So you said the vinegar is not going to be too much. That's how you like your sauce. Try to question me. <laughs> oh, excuse mm -hmm. me. Let me taste it. I think I got it now. Mm. That's it? Mm. Perfection. I'm going to taste it, because I'm the one that likes the sauce. Let's see. Mm, that's it. I taste the lemon juice. Mm -hmm. You know, I taste the vinegar. Mm -hmm. It's creamy, a little sweet. Let's see, what that brown sugar does is more so like mellow it out versus it being a really sweet sauce. Okay, let me finish up the chicken, and I know you're gonna clean up because that's what yes, you always do. That's exactly what I do. I clean as I go. Carde will tear up a whole kitchen. Ooh, 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 look at that chicken. It's nice and brown and pretty. Skin side down first. Most of the cooking got done over here with the indirect smoke. What I'm doing right now is just basically getting that char on the skin side. Probably around, I would say like the 12 minute mark, I'm gonna flip it over and let that other side get nice and grilled as well. So my brother thinks he's a grill master. I keep telling him, no matter where I am, whether it's Charleston, Edisto, I am still the grill master. Ain't that right, Ma? Show you right. The dogs think so. <laughs> Chicken has to cook to 165. That's where it's the safe zone. Put it in the thickest part of the chicken, right here in the breast. Yep, actually way up to temp. So let's get it off. Ooh, you see the juices coming out of that? That smells incredible. The spices, that house seasoning, the brown sugar. These are beautiful. <laughs> oh, now we're talking. Oh, now we're smoking. <laughs> I really love chicken and sausage gumbo because you get that smokiness, you get the tenderness of the chicken. It's just a great gumbo. Oh yeah. I am gonna make my chicken and sausage gumbo. So I'm dicing up my Trinity, which is the start of flavor for any gumbo. Celery, my bell pepper, and I've already diced some onion and I have some garlic to mince as well. So I have some pecan smoked and dewy sausage. It's a smoked sausage that has a little heat to it. And a dewy sausage is what you'd normally find in a gumbo, but you can use any smoked sausage that you have on hand. So I'm gonna start off by searing my meat first. Add just a little bit of canola oil to my Dutch oven here. Searing my sausage. The whole purpose and the beauty of gumbo is that it's just like layers of flavor. So when you eat gumbo, you are really tasting different layers of the process. It's just such a flavorful one pot dish. So I'm just gonna cook off this sausage just a little bit, just get it nice and brown and release some of that oil. While that's cooking, I wanna season my chicken with a little salt and pepper. Pull my sausage out now. Some of that fat has rendered out. Add that seasoned chicken breast and chicken thigh. Using the white and the dark meat for variations of flavor and texture. And I'm just gonna sear both sides until they're golden brown. So gumbo is literally a melting pot. The origins of gumbo can be questioned, but from my understanding, the origins of gumbo is in West Africa. But there are some French and German Creole influences. So I've seared both sides. The kitchen is starting to smell amazing. All right. Now, arguably the most important part of a gumbo, the roux. I'm making a chocolate roux. That means it's gonna be a deep, deep, rich, nutty roux. You gotta start off with half a cup of all-purpose flour and a half a cup of canola oil. The roux is so significant to a gumbo. It's because it's one of the most important flavor notes in a gumbo. It also acts as a thickener for the gumbo, and it's the reason the gumbo has that iconic color. The darker, the nuttier. A lot of people always ask me, how do you make your roux and, and do not burn it? It's because you have to babysit. You gotta keep stirring, you gotta keep your eye on it. If you walk away, I, it could literally burn in seconds. Once a roux goes too far, you can't fix it. So I say just, just do it right from the beginning so you don't have to go through that process again. All right, so we are there. It is nice and chocolatey. Now I'm going to add my veggies. Cool that roux down so it doesn't cook anymore. 
And again, you gotta make sure that you keep your eye on it. So I just dropped my diced veggies in there. Now, more layers of flavor. I'm adding some chicken bouillon in there. I like using chicken bouillon paste um, because it just gives me more concentrated chicken flavor. Look at that, Look, get, get into that pot, y'all. Come on, come on. Look at that. You see how chocolatey that is? How deep and rich that roux is? A little Cajun seasoning, some oregano, paprika, garlic, some cayenne pepper, and another thickener, which is gumbo filet. Gumbo filet is from the sassafras leaf, so it adds a little bit of earthiness and it works as a thickener. Some bay leaves, and now I'm gonna add the liquid, six cups of water. Give it a whisk. So this is gonna cook for about 30 to 45 minutes covered. All of those uh, veggies are gonna get nice and soft, and then I'm gonna add the meat back in and cook it for an additional 30 minutes. So in total, this cooks for about an hour to an hour and a half. That is gonna be the perfect gumbo. I'm gonna put some roasted grapes in here. I have some pecans, I'm gonna have some tarragon. So if you like texture and you like flavor, you're gonna love this recipe. I am getting started on my chicken salad sandwich. I have seasoned both sides of this chicken breast with a little salt and pepper and some olive oil. I'm gonna roast it at 400 degrees for about seven minutes. All right, so I have some pecans here that I'm going to roughly chop. The pecans is gonna add lots of texture and a little nuttiness. I have some fresh tarragon here, a little earthiness, and I'm also adding a little bit more texture with some celery. All right, so it's been about seven minutes. It's time for the chicken to come out. I'm gonna add those grapes. It not only adds a little bit more texture in it, but it's sweet. I like a sweet and salty chicken salad. Red grapes works better with this recipe versus um, your green grapes. For me, I don't find a lot of sweet green grapes. As the grapes roast in the oven, they're gonna get nice and blistered and they're gonna release um, some of that natural sugar. Pop this back in the oven and let it roast for an additional 10 minutes. All right, so for the dressing, I have a little sour cream, okay, for a little tanginess, some mayo, a little Dijon mustard, and some freshly grated garlic. Give it a mix, I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper, and after I add the chicken and all of the other ingredients, I'm gonna taste and add more salt and pepper if I need it. All right, so my chicken and grapes are done. Nice and roasted, and the grapes have blistered. I'm gonna use a fork and shred my chicken breast, and it should just easily shred. So I don't completely shred all of my chicken. I like some thicker pieces. So I shred just enough. And the great thing about this recipe is that it travels well. So if you have like a picnic or you wanna take it to one of your friends or a party, it's one of those good recipes for that. Back to the bowl with my dressing. I'm gonna add that chicken, those roasted grapes, my chopped celery, tarragon, pecans. This is a chunky chicken salad. And I've also chopped some shallots. And as I mix my chicken with the dressing and all of my other ingredients, what I'm gonna do is slightly smush some of the grapes. So you won't have, you know, really big pieces of grapes in there. All right, so I'm gonna assemble my sandwiches now. I have some toasted and buttered sourdough. I have some butter lettuce here. Take that chunky chicken salad, place it down on one side of your bread. I'm gonna take about two of these butter leaves, squish it together. All right, let me give it a taste. <laughs> the chicken is juicy, the grapes are juicy. Delicious! I'm making a simple coating for the chicken wings. Now, because I am putting it in the oven, it's okay to, to put flour on top of that. Because guess what, that flour and the seasoning is gonna help keep it nice and crispy while it's in that oven. And I'm baking it at a high heat. So you kind of get that same effect of deep frying without all of that, you know, extra oil. Just used about a cup of all-purpose flour, teaspoon of baking powder. So I'm gonna add about two teaspoons of my house seasoning. Got some smoked paprika, pepper, granulated onions, some garlic powders in there, and some salt. I have three pounds of chicken wings. Super simple. Just give it a light coating. So while these wings are baking, I'm gonna add a Carolina barbecue sauce. It has mustard, brown sugar, a little spice. You can put some hot sauce in there. It's just like a tangy but sweet barbecue sauce. All 
I have my oven preheated to 425. I'm gonna bake this on the center rack for about 30 minutes. While that's baking, I'm gonna get started on my Carolina barbecue sauce. Of course, mustard. Got some of that brown sugar, some granulated sugar, apple cider vinegar, it's real tangy. Some whoosha whoosha, add a little saltiness, and some hot sauce. Got my burner on medium low heat. I got about a little over a cup of yellow mustard. I'm gonna use a cup of light brown sugar. This Carolina barbecue sauce is gonna be sweet and tangy. I'm gonna add about a half a cup of granulated sugar. Show Worcestershire sauce, about a tablespoon. Third cup of apple cider vinegar. and a few dashes of hot sauce. I like it a little spicy, not too much. But that sugar is definitely gonna help mellow out some of that spice. Use my whisk. Now, the longer you cook Carolina barbecue sauce, the darker it gets. So it's gonna get a golden yellow color. All right, so there's really nothing else to do with this. I'm gonna let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. My sauce is looking great. I'm gonna take the chicken out of the oven, brush it with a little bit of the sauce, pop it back in the oven, and let it cook for an additional 15 minutes. Look at that, and they almost look like fried wings, see? And to think they're just getting started. I'm just gonna take some of the sauce and mop it on there. Mm -hmm. Look at that color. It's gonna continue to get crispy. Gonna lock in some of that sauce and that flavor. Ooh. And you know I'm gonna flip them over and do the same thing to the back. All sides meet love. You know, along with the dip, I think this is gonna be a hit. I'm just gonna flip them over and put some barbecue sauce on this side. And actually, I'm gonna put it back in the oven like this, skin side down, so this side can get a little crispy too. My oven is still at 425. I'm gonna pop it back in there and let it bake for an additional 15 minutes. The wings are almost done. Ooh, look at that, y'all. To make sure that these wings are extra crispy, I'm gonna spray it with a little cooking spray. The oven is still at 425. I'm gonna let it bake for about 10 more minutes. Ooh, do you hear that? Now you tell me these weren't fried. Mm -hmm. So I picked up a roaster from the supermarket, super cheap, so easy to do. Instead of you having to go through the fuss of baking a, a, a small chicken yourself, you can just pick it up from your grocer. And all I'm doing is taking off the skin and just hand picking it. There's no special technique in doing this. Just pick it till you pick it dry. So I'm pulling the chicken a little bit more with my hand. You can keep this simple and just hand shred it, or if you want it a little smaller, you can chop it up. Got a celery stock. I'm gonna use a few sticks. I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. One red bell pepper. I want it to have a little sweeter flavor, and red pepper is just prettier. <laughs> Gives it that pop of color. Got a little bit of garlic powder. This is to taste. If you feel like you need to add a little bit more, by all means, add more. But this is definitely just from the heart. <laughs> Teaspoon of paprika. I eyeball my mayo, so it's about a cup total. To take it up a notch, I add a Dijon mustard because it just gives it that, that tangy bite. Salt, a little bit of cracked black pepper. The chicken salad itself is just so beautiful, and it, you just want a bread that's gonna complement the texture of the chicken salad and the taste of it. Croissant does that. It's buttery, it's flaky, it's just right. I'm gonna slice off my bread first and then add in the chicken salad. Got yourself a cute little chicken salad sandwich. I'm gonna add homemade bacon jam to these chicken 
salad sandwiches. So I'm gonna assemble the sandwiches now, and I'm gonna let my girls put the bacon jam on it themselves when we get to the park. Alrighty, so I'm finishing up wrapping these. I'm gonna pop them in the fridge. I cooked about a pound of bacon, and I'm not discarding all of my bacon fat. I'm gonna use about two tablespoons of the bacon fat in the jam. I've already started chopping some shallot. And I'm using three, giving it a rough chop. I'm gonna chop up some garlic. I love garlic and everything. Add it to the pot. I'm gonna grab my cooked bacon. Crumble that right in there. And if you want finer pieces, just throw it in the food processor. Got some good old local molasses. Half a cup or so. I'm using some honey. I'm getting variations of sweetness here. Brown sugar. Combine those sugars with that saltiness and smokiness from the bacon. Nothing like it. Life changing. A little bit of sherry. So I want that punch of wine flavor. Apple cider vinegar. It balances out all of the flavors that I'm using. Ground mustard. Got my garlic powder in there. A little salt, a little pepper. Give it a little stir. That looks great. I'm gonna take it back to the stove, get this thing heated up. Right, so I've brought it to a boil. I'm gonna reduce the heat now and let it simmer until it gets nice and thick. My mom used to make some really good smothered chicken growing up. Mm -hmm. So I'm making my version of a Carolina smothered chicken. Mm -hmm. Can you season the chicken with my house seasoning? What's in here? Onion powder, garlic powder, mm -hmm. salt, paprika, and pepper. And while you do that, just season, you know, you know how to season chicken. Yes. After my mom seasons the chicken, she's gonna dredge it with a little flour and the same house seasoning. Mm -hmm. Fry it not all the way through. You wanna smother and cook the chicken in the sauce. Mm -hmm but you want it to get nice and crispy. That looks good. That's pretty. That is very pretty. To make this pan sauce, I'm gonna add some butter. I've left a little bit of the oil from the fried chicken. Onions. I'm gonna saute this down. Garlic. Some minced garlic. Salt. Pepper. Mmm, that smells good, huh? Yes. And now I'm gonna add my spices. Some dried mustard, about a teaspoon of that. A half a teaspoon dried rosemary. I'm only using a half a teaspoon because it's much more pungent than using fresh herbs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm using a half a teaspoon of dried thyme. Chicken stock. Now I'm gonna use a third cup of stock. Uh -huh. And I'm just gonna let some of that stock evaporate. As it cooks and boils up, then it's... It's reducing. Yeah. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. It's gonna give it that tang and that pale yellow color. Now I'm gonna whisk in about one and a half cups of heavy cream. Slowly. Wow, it's thickening it up as soon as it hits the mm -hmm. heat. Oh, it smells so good. Mm -hmm. What I like to do now is add the chicken back in. For a color, I'm just adding a little bit of fresh parsley. Kind of like that contrast between dried and fresh herbs. How pretty is that? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna let this go for another 25 to 30 minutes with the top on. Oh, that's pretty. You ready to eat? Yes. All right, let's get this plated. We are making southern chicken and dumplings today. It is a chicken and vegetable stew with pillowy soft chive dumplings on top. You ready to cook? Let's go. So we have our Dutch oven here heated to medium high heat. If you do not have a Dutch oven, you can use a large deep pot. Let's take four tablespoons of unsalted butter and melt it into our pot. While that's melting, let's talk about our chicken. I have six boneless, skinless chicken thighs here. Just a pinch of salt and pepper on both sides. My mom used to use whole chicken cut into pieces, but today in this class, we're using boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Let's wash our hands.
Our butter is melted. Let's add in our chicken. And I like using boneless, skinless chicken thighs because it's easier to shred at the end. We're gonna let this sear on one side for three minutes. While that's searing, let's go over to our cutting board. So for our vegetables, we have carrots, celery, and an onion. All right, let's chop our carrots. I'd say let's cut them about a half an inch thick. If you like bigger chunks of carrot, you can do that as well. Put your carrots into a bowl. Now we have our celery. And we're gonna cut our celery the same, about a half an inch thick. All right guys, let's turn our chicken. The chicken should be brown on this side, and it is. Your pot may create a hot spot. I see that this side of the pot is a little hotter. So let's just rotate. Take the more brown pieces, and move them to the back. Okay. While that's cooking on this side, let's go back to our cutting board. Let's chop the rest of our celery. Line up your celery stalks together and just dice this way. Keeping those fingers tucked. Use the back of your knife to scrape. Never use this side of your knife. You will dull your knife. Okay. All right, gather up your celery, put it into the bowl with your carrots. Let's not forget about our onion. Okay. We're gonna dice our onion a little smaller than the carrot and the celery. Okay, put your onions in a bowl. Let's head back to the stove. Okay, let's check on our chicken. Should be golden brown on both sides, and they are. So let's remove the chicken and put it on a tray. What we're gonna do now is cook our vegetables in the remnants of the chicken. I don't know about you, but this kitchen smells amazing. Okay. So if you may have noticed some of your butter may have burnt off, that's okay. You can add two more tablespoons of butter. that to melt. What we want to do here is loosen up some of that brown stuck on stuff because that's where all the seasoning and flavor is. Okay. Let's take our veggies and put it into our Dutch oven. Okay. Give it a mix and make sure you're scraping as you mix. Getting up all of that stuck on flavor. Let's add a little bit more salt and pepper. Generous pinch. All right. 
Give it a mix and we're gonna let this cook for three more minutes. What we're doing here is just cooking until the onion turns slightly translucent. Remember, this is a soup. So a lot of the cooking is gonna happen once we add in our liquid. And you wanna keep stirring at this point because you don't want your onions to stick to your pot. Stir, scrape, stir and scrape. That looks good to me. Let's grab our flour. You should have two tablespoons, put it into your pot. The flour is gonna help thicken up our soup. Give it a stir. While this softens, let's head back to our cutting board and chop two cloves of garlic. I like adding garlic at this point because garlic loses its intensity the longer you cook it. So I like adding in garlic right before the liquid goes into our pot. Okay, we're just giving it a rough chop. Nothing fancy guys. All right, let's take our garlic back to the pot. Add your garlic to the pot, give it a stir. Ooh, you see, as soon as that garlic hits the fat and the butter and the heat, wow, it smells amazing. Let's add in six cups of chicken stock. Bring it to a slight boil, so you may have to turn up the heat on your pot. Give it a stir. Loosen up any of that stuck on goodness from the sides. I like to use my wooden spoon and do that. Let's add in our bay leaf. One should do the trick. Okay, let's add our chicken back to the pot. And what my mom always loved to do, get some of that chicken juice and put it right in the pot. Oh, that looks pretty, guys. All right, hit pause and meet me back here once your stock is boiled. All right, our stock is boiling. Let's reduce the heat and allow this to simmer for 45 minutes. While this is simmering, let's go over and make our chive dumplings. We have one cup of all-purpose flour. Level it off with your finger. Add it to your bowl. One teaspoon of baking powder. And a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Give it a whisk. Let's add in two tablespoons of vegetable shortening and you can cut that in with a fork. You wanna cut in your shortening with the fork until your shortening turns into the size of a pea. Let's add in our buttermilk. You should have two third cup of buttermilk. Give it a whisk. All right, let's dice a bunch of chives. Okay, you wanna dice them fairly fine. This is a little different from my mom's recipe. She didn't use chives, but I love the oniony flavor of a chive. Okay. Right, that should be about two tablespoons. Add it to your bowl. Okay. Let's fold in our chives. And you just wanna fold until your chives are thoroughly incorporated. That looks good to me. Hit pause and meet me back at the stove when 45 minutes is up. 
All right, so it's been 45 minutes. Let's remove our top and shred the chicken. I like to shred the chicken with two forks, that's it. Make sure your heat is turned down to low. And your chicken should easily shred with a fork. I like to shred my chicken pretty much completely. I like to leave some chunks of chicken, but make sure that most of your chicken is shredded. And you can do this to your liking. A little chunky, a little shredded, you know, a good mixture of both. Okay, that looks good. Now let's drop in our dumpling mixture. I like to spray my spoons with a little cooking spray before adding in this dumpling mixture. That will help the dumpling fall right into your soup. Look, that's it, nothing left on the spoon. And these don't have to be perfect. My mom's dumplings were never perfect, <laughs> but they taste amazing. I'm gonna try to get about six to eight dumplings out of this mixture. It just depends on you and how big you like your dumplings, but this mixture should yield about six to eight dumplings, medium size. We're gonna cover the pot and let it go for an additional 15 minutes. Pause and meet me back here when it's ready. All right, so it's been 15 minutes. Let's check on our chicken and dumplings. Oh, wow, look at that. Smells incredible. All right, let's head over and serve this in a bowl. Wow. All right, before we put our chicken and dumplings into a bowl, this is what I like to do. I like to add a little bit more greenery on top. So I'm gonna take some fresh parsley and give it a rough chop. Just adds a pop of color to your bowl. Grab your bowl and a ladle. I like to grab the meat and the soup first and then put my dumplings on top. Oh, I'm getting real hungry. <laughs> Got my other little dumpling right there. Mm -hmm. I think I can put one more in there. All right. Let's get your parsley and just sprinkle on top. Let's give it a taste. Make sure you blow it off, it may be a little hot. Mmm, 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 mmm. Takes me back to my childhood. Incredible. Mm. It's well seasoned. The chives and the dumplings, they just melt in your mouth. You get some of that oniony flavor. You get the robust flavor of the veggies, the carrots, the celery. The chicken thighs just adds another layer of flavor in there. This is what you call chicken and dumplings. I'm gonna get started on my fried chicken. I'm using a brine and I'm using a pickling brine. So I have two cups of water in my pot here. I'm gonna use about two tablespoons of pickling spice. So that's like peppercorn, there's red pepper flakes in there. I'm gonna use one bay leaf two tablespoons of kosher salt. And now I'm gonna add a quarter cup of sugar. I love brining my chicken because it helps the chicken retain its moisture. So that chicken stays really, really juicy once you fry it. I'm gonna bring my mixture to a boil. So it's a pickling brine. The pickling part comes from the pickling spices and vinegar. A little vinegar in there. Today I'm using dark meat because I just believe that dark meat has a little bit more flavor. So I'm using drumsticks and thighs. My favorite is the thigh. This is the rolling boil I'm looking for. I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna cool this down in a bowl of ice cubes. You don't wanna cook your chicken in the brine, so it has to be cool. It smells amazing and I know this fried chicken is gonna blow his mind. You wanna make sure when you are brining your chicken that it's skin side down and you have enough brine to cover the chicken. If you don't have enough brine, just add some more water to your bowl. Alrighty, let me wash my hands. So I'm gonna let my chicken sit here in the brine for about an hour to two hours. 
Now I'm gonna get started on my Hoppin' John. So Hoppin' John, we don't know why it's called Hoppin' John. I don't even know who John is. I don't think anyone knows who John is, but all I know is this is a really great dish, okay? So black eyed peas, rice, some type of smoked meat, that's all it is. Two cups of dried black eyed peas. I'm gonna bring it to a boil and cook it on low for about two hours. I've added enough water in my Dutch oven here to cover the peas. To season this, I'm gonna use smoked turkey legs. I'm gonna bring this pot to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'm gonna reduce it to a simmer, cover and let it cook for two hours. My chicken has been brining. Now it's time to take it out and get ready to fry it. I'm making sure that I'm dripping off any excess pickling spices. Sometimes it does get stuck to the skin. When you think about Southern fried chicken, it is American Southern. It's American and Southern as you can get. Gullah, on the other hand, not so much. We like to stew our chicken. So over the years, somehow these two paths have crossed. Now Gullah people fry our chicken as well. But traditional Gullah cuisine consists of stewed foods. All right, buttermilk also helps tenderize the chicken. So this is gonna be some juicy chicken. And the buttermilk also helps the dredge adhere to the chicken. You gotta have a really great dredge to make a really great fried chicken. Three cups of all-purpose flour, some salt, I'm using kosher salt, eyeballing this, some garlic powder, onion powder. When you look at seasoning salt, it usually has a red color to it, and that's from the paprika. It's more mellow. You can tell that it's paprika, but it's not overpowering. Give it a whisk. Mmm, this is gonna be amazing. Growing up, my mom taught me how to use this paper bag. She said her grandmother taught her how to use the paper bag, so maybe that's the secret. So now I'm just dropping off any excess buttermilk. Give it a shake. Okay, you see how nice and coated that is? Ooh, that's gonna be some crunchy fried chicken. That's the benefit of using the bag. It's gonna get your chicken coated evenly. My family tradition is, if you have a guest that comes over, you send them home with a plate. And Capers is gonna go home with a nice plate for him, and he's gonna enjoy this tomorrow with his wife, Dee Dee. She's so cute. That is all of my chicken. So I've got my canola oil nice and hot, about 350. I'm gonna start with my thighs because thighs take a little longer to cook. And I also make sure that I do not overcrowd the skillet because if you overcrowd the skillet, it's gonna lower the temperature of the oil and you wanna avoid that. I put the skin side down first because I wanna achieve that golden color, then flip it over and let it really cook throughout. I wanna let this fry for about four to five minutes, then flip it over and cook it for an additional four to five minutes. All I want to do here is get it nice and golden. I'm gonna finish the cooking in the oven, keeping them warm until they're ready to serve. See, yeah, ooh, mm. That is gonna be juicy. Perfect, they're ready to come out. Drumsticks are a little smaller, so the cooking time is a little less. Three to four minutes per side. I'm gonna let that cook for about three to four minutes and then flip it over and let it cook for an additional three or four minutes. My mom and my grandmother love frying chicken on Fridays and I would love coming home from school and hearing this. Sometimes I would smell it in the driveway before I even got to the door. This is bringing back those memories for me. So I have little ones coming by today and I'm gonna start off by making them chicken strips, but I'm not frying them. I'm gonna put them in the oven. I'm gonna coat them with my favorite potato chips. And I'm using a chip that it has a lot of flavors in it, but it's mainly like a tangy barbecue. And it's gonna taste really, really great with this honey mustard dip I'm making. So I've cut up four chicken breasts into strips before I dredge it. I wanna, of course, salt the chicken. And some pepper. One cup of flour into this baking dish. I'm gonna crack three eggs in the bowl right here. Give this a whisk. So I've crushed these chips right in the bag. So I'm gonna season the flour as well. Two teaspoons of salt, about a teaspoon of pepper. 
two teaspoons of onion powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of ground mustard. I decided to use ground mustard because I'm making a honey mustard sauce, so I kind of want that flavor in both the chicken and the dip. And one teaspoon of paprika. Let's get started. Take a strip, mix it around the flour, dip it in the egg, and directly into the chips. That flour and egg is gonna make sure that everything sticks. So when it bakes, it's gonna be super crunchy and it's gonna taste like I fried them. Being an auntie is really, really cool, especially like the aunties that don't have any children. It's like, you get to have all the fun and then send them back home. All right, oven set to 450. You wanna check it after 10 minutes, then flip it. Now I'm gonna make the dip for my chicken strips. I, I, I get tired of eating the same honey mustard dip all the time. It's the same basic nah, dip. So I decided to use every mustard I had available in my fridge. <laughs> and I experimented and make it a little creamy, make it a little tangy. It's, it's everything that I want a honey mustard to be. Lots of honey. I'm gonna use some yellow mustard. That yellow mustard is gonna give you that tangy, classic mustard flavor. I'm gonna use some Dijon. I'm also using stone ground Dijon, and that's gonna give it a little texture, little whole grain seeds. I would say about five tablespoons of mayo. That's gonna make it creamy. Garlic powder, because I love garlic. Salt and pepper. You can use this on anything. You can use it on your sandwiches. You can use it on a burger. You can dip some french fries in this. Mm. Let me check on those chicken strips. They are ready to be flipped. Mm -hmm. Look how pretty those are. I can tell it's nice and crispy. I can hear it. So I'm flipping it to make sure that both sides get crispy. These look amazing and they smell even better. My chicken strips are done. Ooh, they are gorgeous. They're nice and brown and golden. 